Hello, my name is Jean-Pierre, and I'm a PhD student in the Robotic Systems Lab at ETH Zurich. Today, I'll be presenting an approach for handling constraints with an Erceding Horizon DDP-based algorithm. When considering methods for controlling dynamical systems, one of the most prominent approaches is model predictive control. It is a well-established and widely used technique that synthesizes control actions based on continuous online replanning. Its power, therefore, lies in its ability to combine a reactive behavior with a look-ahead strategy. Another strong point of MPC is its ability to encode complex tasks in a simple cost function, while also accounting for system constraints. The way it essentially operates is by repeatedly solving a finite time optimal control problem in a receding horizon fashion. Therefore, one could say that the quality of the resulting control law highly depends on these two factors, the speed at which the underlying optimal control algorithm solves the problem and how well this algorithm handles the problem constraints. So briefly, there exists two main classes of trajectory optimization techniques. On one hand, we have the direct methods, which are often described as a discretized and optimized approach. They work by transcribing the original problem, thereby transforming the infinite dimensional optimization into a finite dimensional one. This is then solved with standard nonlinear programming solvers. On the other hand, indirect methods rely on fundamental principles that provide necessary or sufficient conditions of optimality. One such method that has gained significant traction is differential dynamic programming. It relies on Bellman's principle of optimality, and it uses local quadratic approximations of the problem to compute an affine policy from a backward Riccati equation. I will go into more details regarding the DDP algorithm later, but for now the main takeaway from this slide should be that this method has linear time complexity, which makes it more computationally efficient than standard direct methods. This makes it favorable for us in real-time control applications involving systems with fast dynamics. The problem, however, is that unlike NLP solvers, the Riccati solvers used by DDP-based methods are not inherently designed to handle constraints. So in this work, we aim to bridge this gap by resorting to concepts and techniques introduced in the nonlinear optimization literature. Ultimately, the goal would be to devise a DDP-based MPC solver that is capable of incorporating generic path constraints. A popular technique for constraint handling is based on transforming the problem into its equivalent unconstrained version and solving that instead. This is done by absorbing the constraints into the cost function with differentiable functions such as a quadratic penalty for equality constraints and the log barrier for inequalities. The relaxed problem on the right only approaches the original one for large values of rho and small values of mu. However, this is also where numerical ill-conditioning issues start to appear, thus causing convergence difficulties. This is clearly visible in the Hessian expression, where the two highlighted terms introduce eigenvalues that are either very large or zero. And this in itself leads to a high condition number for the Hessian matrix. Another function that could be used to enforce inequalities in the cost is the quadratically relaxed barrier. This combines a log barrier with an exterior quadratic penalty. Unlike the standard barrier function, it gets rid of the singularity at the boundary of the feasible region and allows for infeasible iterates to take place without any algorithmic failures. It is particularly interesting for us as it is used as a benchmark when testing our approach. The thing to note here is that depending on how the parameters are tuned, one of the following issues could arise. Ill conditioning of the Hessian matrix, tightening of the feasible region, which also leads to a shifted minimizer, or strong violations in the constraints due to an over-relaxation of the problem. A powerful remedy to all these problems can be found in the augmented Lagrangian approach. The basic idea behind it is that instead of adding the penalty terms to the cost function, they are added to the Lagrangian of the problem to form the so-called augmented Lagrangian. Briefly, the algorithm consists of an inner loop that minimizes the augmented Lagrangian for fixed values of nu and rho, followed by an outer loop that adapts the Lagrange multipliers with an appropriate update rule. These updates aim to drive the multipliers to the dual solution of the problem. The key thing to note here is that as nu approaches its optimum, the minimizer in the inner loop approaches the primal solution of the original problem. 
And this actually happens for finite values of the penalty parameter, which implies that convergence can be attained without any numerical issues. Now going back to the constrained optimal control setting, we develop a framework that builds on top of the OCS2 library. The underlying solver is based on the sequential linear quadratic algorithm, a continuous time DDP variant that relies on first order approximations of the dynamics. In a previous version of the solver, state input equality constraints were handled with the projection technique, state only equalities with a quadratic penalty method, and inequality constraints with a relaxed log barrier. Alternatively, in order to avoid the numerical issues discussed earlier, we propose an SLQ variant that handles inequalities and state only equality constraints with an augmented Lagrangian approach. On the other hand, we still use the same projection technique for state input equalities since it already works quite well in enforcing strict feasibility. Since we treat each type of constraint differently, we perform a partial elimination of constraints when constructing the augmented Lagrangian. And for the sake of conciseness, we only cover the inequality constraint case, but the same formulation could also be easily extended to the case of pure state equalities. Now, the way the constrained SLQ algorithm works is as follows. In the inner loop, we start by performing a forward rollout of the dynamics around the nominal input trajectory. Note that by keeping the derivations in the continuous time domain, we can make use of adaptive step size integrators to perform the rollout. Then, a second order approximation of the augmented Lagrangian is computed along with a linearization of the dynamics and equality constraints. Now, in order to solve the approximated problem, SLQ relies on Pontryagin's minimum principle, which boils down, boils down to a minimization of the Hamiltonian function. The Hamiltonian in this case is defined by adjoining the dynamics and constraints to the augmented Lagrangian through the use of additional Lagrange multipliers. As a result, a Riccati-like equation emerges, which when solved yields a constraint consistent control policy. The controller could be improved by further minimizing the augmented Lagrangian with the line search strategy applied to the feedforward input step. These steps are then followed by an outer loop that updates the inequality multipliers and extrapolates the tails of the trajectories due to the moving horizon. It is important to note that in each MPC iteration, the minimization problem is not solved up to convergence. This is because computing suboptimal solutions at high rates results in superior closed loop performance when compared to optimal solutions computed at low rates. So, what we do is that in each MPC call, only a single inner and outer loop iteration is performed before applying our inputs. When it comes to selecting a proper augmented Lagrangian penalty, a variety of options exist in the literature. The most popular choice is given by the PHR method. The basic idea behind it is to transform the inequality constraints into equalities by introducing positive slag variables. Afterwards, a quadratic penalty is applied to the new equality constraint, which is then minimized with respect to the slag variables, resulting in a new penalty function. A different formulation is based on the non-slag or non-PHR penalty. This method has been used previously in the context of trajectory optimization. It is clear that the PHR and non-PHR penalties match whenever the constraint is violated. However, they differ in the interior of the feasible region where the non-slag version keeps applying a penalty whenever the multiplier is greater than zero. And this is true no matter how far the current solution is from the boundary. One of the drawbacks of quadratic type penalties applied to inequality constraints is that res the resulting augmented Lagrangian is not twice differentiable. So we consider a third option from a family of smooth penalty functions. Notice that it somewhat resembles the relaxed barrier, but with a quadratic penalty whose linear term can be adapted according to the corresponding multiplier updates. When it comes to the outer loop, it turns out that the update law for the multipliers is of crucial importance to the convergence of our algorithm. Typically, the standard heuristic shown on the right is used. And this effectively leads to update steps that are in the order of the penalty parameter. However, since the primal solution is computed with a single SLQ iteration, it is not the actual minimum at the current step. So we found it useful in practice to update the dual variables with smaller step sizes. This actually comes from the idea that multiplier updates could be interpreted as gradient ascent steps that are meant to maximize the Lagrange dual function. 
As a result, we get the following update rules corresponding to the different augmented Lagrangian penalties. Alpha here is a step length parameter. Notice that if we set alpha equal to rho, then these equations coincide with the updates given by the standard heuristic. We validated the constraint SLQ MPC framework with numerical simulations of three dynamical systems, a cart pole, a ball butt, and a quadrupedal mobile manipulator. In these examples, the augmented Lagrangian penalties were also compared and benchmarked against the relaxed barrier method. So we start with a cart pole swing up task with input bounds. In this case, all four methods manage to solve the task with minor constraint violations, as shown in the bottom right plot. This was only possible for small step sizes in the multiplier updates. The non-slack penalty led to the poorest performance. We hypothesized that this is because this penalty could still result in gradients that would push feasible iterates outside the boundary of the feasible region. The second task involves a ball bot tracking a desired set point while avoiding obstacles. All three augmented Lagrangian methods managed to find a similar solution. As for the relaxed barrier, the solver converges to a feasible solution but causes the robot to be stuck in between the red pillars. This is because the actual feasible region was tightened due to a high barrier parameter. And even when the gap between the red pillars is increased, the ball bot is able to approach the goal but never attains a zero steady state error. The reason is that the minimizer of the new cost function is shifted with respect to the original one which leads to a new reference equilibrium point. This is also visible in the plots of the cost function value on the bottom right. In this last example, a quadrupedal mobile manipulator is required to push a 10 kg block. Both the locomotion and manipulation tasks are encoded with a set of state input equality constraints. Moreover, inequality constraints are introduced to enforce torque limits on the arm joints. The relaxed barrier method either fails to converge or violates the constraints, so we only discuss the augmented Lagrangian penalties. In these cases, we notice that the solver discovers whole body motions that tend to drive the arm close to a singularity while pushing the block. This provides the necessary pushing force without the need to violate any of the arm torque limits. Finally, we conclude that the classical and smooth PHR penalties with relatively low multiplier step sizes yield the best performances overall. But in terms of computational time, the smooth PHR has a slight advantage due to its second order continuity. Additional details on the MPC formulation of this robot are provided in the reference below. Thank you for your attention.